buck right there. There's a buck right here. There's elk too. There's elk here. Yes. You know, I moved to Colorado about 20 years ago now, and two of the big reasons for that were elk and mule deer. And I love hunting late season. I mean, it's just, it's an amazing time. These are the surviving animals, late season. They've been pursued. He's got some height, doesn't he? Yeah, he's a pretty buck. Tall, tall buck, but he's nice. And to get on them and get one of those, that's a real trophy to me. Yep, give him a couple more years and it'll be a real nice buck. Exactly. But it's really just the experience. It's this whole atmosphere of getting out into the high country. There's nobody else around, just all wild country. That's why I love Colorado. I'm hunting in the high mountains of Southern Colorado with timberline guides and outfitters. I've hunted with this crew before and it's uncanny how dialed in they are in their home turf of the Colorado Rockies. My guide, T.J. Dorval, knew there was a huge bull in the area that we were hoping to find on this hunt. But even with good scouting in a prime location, big bulls can just vanish into thin air, especially in the late season. And then, like Chris said, we have these late season hunts um, that they provide, you know, a different experience. It's not the bugling bulls, but it's a lot of glassing, a lot of covering country, seeing, you know, pretty much every nook of the ranch. We're, we're digging deep to try to find these bulls. Don't move, he's still looking right at it. That's the bull that was, that was with the other one. This bull elk with a non-typical dagger point on its left side was easy to recognize. And TJ knew this bull was often spotted hanging around the massive herd bull that we were after. So we're on red alert. We're thinking this could be it. Is that him? No, you just got on the stairs. No, that's not him. That's not him. He's gonna be some great management bulls. <laughs> Pretty hard to miss that one, isn't it? The yeah. Old no. dagger on one side. Yeah, very distinguishable bull. Damn, that, that would have been the right spot, wouldn't it? That would have been perfect. Been phenomenal. 125 yards. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't ask for better. Well, what? Let's go find another one. This time of year, you know, it's it's post rut. These bulls are really just trying to put on calories and stay in cover. They're not spending a lot of time on those open slopes to get short windows to, to work with them when they're out feeding. They're, they're getting back to the trees early. And typically, we're, we're trying to catch them in the open slopes. It's just, uh, you know, it's easier to actually get to see what kind of bull you're, you're looking at. He's a five, isn't he? Yeah. He is definitely broke on his left side. Yeah, yeah let's just peek over this edge. Welcome to the Donner Hunt. And I thought, this is perfect. I mean, what could be better than hunting in a blizzard? I've had a lot of fun hunting in snow. And I remember an elk hunt in Montana, you know, where I could see about 300 yards and we found a bull, beautiful bull, at about 250 yards. It was just standing in the timber, covered in snow. It looked like a statue. Yeah, that's a good bull, Chris. Yeah. Set up next to a tree and he's just sort of grazing along. He's still under that giant cedar. Get up on sticks and just wait for him to quarter away just a little bit. To the right. Yeah. God, he's tough to see. It looks like I'm looking through a bunch of milk. Here we go. Here we go. Take him. I'm gonna take him. Got him. <laughs> Drop. Straight I down. lost him. <laughs> That's a good bull, man. He was a beautiful bull, 300, 310 class bull, six by six. You're just amazed by the sheer size of seven, eight hundred pound beast. He's got his big winter coat on. Holy cow. I mean, holy bull. <laughs> that is a serious old bull right there, the monarch of the mountains. Yeah. A big game hunter always welcomes fresh snow. While it might present extra obstacles and challenges, it also makes spotting and tracking a whole lot easier. Hee haw. Well, hey, well, let's, let's go hunting. <laughs> there better be a dang elk up here. <laughs> Our primary mode of transportation here is side-by-sides. We use Polaris Rangers. They let us cover this ranch. 
we were in 15 to 18 inches of snow, chained up and still able to get around and get into those kind of hard to reach places where those bulls and bucks are. I can't see their tracks coming out, but they're boogieing pretty good. There's a bunch of them, look at that, six bulls, yeah. Another one coming out of the trees. I mean, do you see anything that's 300 there? Uh, that one's probably three, 310. Um, I don't think we need to you know, look at them seriously by any means, but. Well, you picked the right spot. You were there. Well, let's get out of this window. Keep going, huh? Well, that's a good sign, they're moving. Yeah, they're on their feet feeding. Just gotta find the right one now. Yeah. We've been chasing a big bull in this bull right here for the last three days. It's the best bull we've seen. They basically feed in this basin here at night, early in the morning, and they hightail it for the timber. So we're just trying to cut him off. We're just gonna check these fingers as we walk up here, see if he's still hanging. It's, we just saw about eight bulls already high, taken off into the timber. It's late season, they've been hunted, they're smart. We gotta get lucky. We just gotta get lucky. You know, you gotta keep your energy up, you gotta keep positive, and, and you do this long enough and you know a lot can happen that last day, so you just stay positive. It's the last night's bed, kinda Better right day. after that storm. It's got a little bit of the fresh snow in it. Lone bull, huh? Yeah, two bulls, it looks like. Well, we're in the hood. Yeah, we're in the ballpark. We know the address of one really good bull. Let's see if we can get on him, but we're gonna have to knock on his bedroom door. He's breaking his antlers. Stay on his track, see where he goes for a little bit. Good. So let's get in there and see if we can find this beast that's been missed in the archery season, the muzzleloader season, earlier rifle hunts. This was an epic beast on the mountain. We had to get after him. And this, this aspen forest is a peculiar forest because it's, they're, they're like ghosts moving through here because the, the depth of, of all these trees creates its own camouflage, if you will. And that works for you as well as for the elk. So if you go in slow enough, you take your time and you sift through with glass, you're gonna see those elk hopefully before they see you. And that's exactly what happened. You got a good bull there, yep. Is he bedded? Yep. You can see his head through the trees right here. He's Finally, we could see one bull was really, really a nice bull. Had to be the big one we were after. What are these down there, what do you think? Yeah, I'm just trying to pick a path. Wind's good. We got a great wind, yeah. We could tell he's that bull. He's, he's a giant. It's what we're looking for, no questions asked. He's what we're trying to get. He's just there right behind yeah, that. His head's down right now. Yep. Yeah, the big guy's staying, though. He's not getting up. No, he's down. Yeah, I could take him right there in the bed. Let's just wait him out, though. Yeah, we'll give him time. We got the wind right. Got a perfect wind. We got plenty of daylight. There's the bull. He's behind cover. There's another bull to the right, another one to the left. We just had to wait him out. He had to stand up before I could take a shot. Yeah, he's getting antsy. Yeah. And it was just a patience game, and we just outweighed him. He finally moves around, kind of stretches, like, I think I'm getting hungry. Front legs go up, back legs, rocks forward, stands up. Give me your shoulder. Show me your shoulder. There you go. As soon as that bull stood up, I, I didn't want to give it any time to sort of, you know, move behind cover. Dropped him. Good shot. <sighs> that was worth the wait, man. Way to go, buddy. Way to go. Good work. That was it. 85 yards away, and just a magnificent bull. Giant bull. I just, <laughs> that's just fantastic. Yeah, look oh at those. Oh my goodness. Look at the. That is a fantastic bull. Great mass on him. Holy criminy. That's just so fantastic. <laughs> so fantastic. Everything I'd heard about this bull was true. Heavy, heavy antlers, long tines, just the monarch of the mountains. This cool stuff, heavy, you got all bull. this mask. Yeah, what a great beast. <laughs> you know, this bull has great fronts, great mass. He's just a heavy, heavy old bull, pretty wide, 
giant fourth on the one side. He's just kind of a bladed fourth, just, you know, great character bull, giant, giant, giant bull. Great mature bull. <laughs> Fantastic. Mid-day. What a way to end the season, huh? No kidding. What a fantastic hunt. Yeah. Yeah, that's just, that's just a fantastic beast. <laughs> Hallelujah. Not light, is it? Not bad. I'm actually half tempted to oh, throw more stop it. it. <laughs> stop it, he says. All right, the mountaineer go. Sir Martin Conway said, each fresh peak ascended teaches us something. The same could be said for mountain hunts. I climb these rugged Colorado peaks every year in pursuit of elk and mule deer. And every time That's I learn something day. new. <laughs> Each high altitude adventure presents a unique challenge and with it, an unforgettable memory. It's a wonderful addiction and I sure hope no one ever finds a cure. <laughs>